So reading from fifth canto, chapter six. Mm -hmm. This is called the activities of Lord Rishabde. And this is verse number 12.
I think. And then let's see, yesterday we did, uh, no, today is verse number 10. Verse number 10. So this is a prose. So we don't usually chant the prose, we chant the word for word. So if you could repeat after me. Ye, ye, na, by which pseudo religious systems have ha, certainly Kalo and this age of Kali Manuja Aspasada, the most condemned men, Deva Maya Mohita. Bewildered by the external energy or illusionary energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Swavidi Yoga Saucha Charita Vihina. Okay, we'll do it again. Swavidi Yoga Socha Charita Vihina. Without character, Without character. Cleanliness, cleanliness, and the rules and regulations, rules and regulations. Giving a, given, accordingly given accordingly to one's own duty in life. Deva Helanani, Deva. negligent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Negligent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Aparatani. Aparatani. Impious vows, Nija Nija Itschaya, by their own desire, by their own desire, Grihana, Grihana. Accepting. accepting, Asnana, Asnana. Anachamana, Asaucha, Klesha Ulu Ulun Chana, Adini. Concocting religious principles, religious principles such as no bathing, no washing of the mouth, being unclean, and plucking out the hair. Now, by the age of Kali, the Dharma Bahulena, with an abundance of irreligion, of Ubahata Diya, whose consciousness is destroyed. Whose consciousness is destroyed. Brahma Brahmana, Brahma Brahma. Yagya Purusha, Purusha. Loka Vidusaka, blasphemous towards the Vedas, the strict Brahmanas. The strict Brahmanas. Ritualistic ceremonies, the ritualistic ceremony, such as sacrifice, sacrifice towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the personality of Godhead and the devotees. Prayena, Prayena almost entirely, almost entirely the Vishyanti will become. So we're hearing about the degradation in the age of Kali. People who are the lowest among men, bewildered by the illusionary energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, will give up the original Vanarshram Dharma and its rules and regulations. They will abandon bathing three times daily and worshiping the Lord, abandon cleanliness and neglecting the Supreme Lord. They will accept nonsensical principles not regularly bathing or washing their mouths regularly, they will always remain unclean and they will pluck out their hair. Following a concocted religion, they will flourish. During this age of Kali, people are more inclined to irreligious systems. Consequently, these people will naturally derive Vedic authority, the followers of Vedic authority, the Brahmanas, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the devotees. Srila Prabhupada's purport. 
Presently, the hippies in the Western countries fit this description. They are irresponsible and unregulated. They do not bathe and they deride standard rate of knowledge. They concoct new lifestyles and religions. There are many hippie groups at the present moment, but they are all originated from King Arhat, who imitated the activities of Lord Rishabde, who was situated on the Paramahansa stage. King Arhat did not care for the fact that although Lord Rishabhati acted like a madman, his stool and urine were nonetheless aromatic, so much so that they nicely scented the countryside for miles around. The followers of King Arhat went under the name of Jains, and they were later followed by many others, particularly by the hippies, who were more or less offshoots of Mayavadi philosophy because they think themselves the supreme personality of Godhead. Such people do not respect the real followers of the Vedic principles, the ideal Brahmanas, nor do they have respect for the supreme personality of Godhead, the supreme Brahman. Due to the influence of this age of Kali, they are apt to concoct false religious system. Omagyan tumiram dasya genajana Salakaya Chaksun Militamuna Tasmai Shri Gurveena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prasdaya Mutalai Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namina Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvase Sarasuni Vadi Pastyatya Dev Sutarine Anchakopatra Vishakri Basindu Bay Vachapatitanam Pavane Bio Vaishavibyo Namahona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gonda Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so here we're dis describing some of the characteristics of the people in the age of Kali. There are four ages of mankind, Sati Yuga, Treta Yuga, Vapura Yuga, and Kali Yuga. And each one has certain characteristics that are prominent of the age. In the Sati Yuga, the prominent characteristics were 99.9% .9 of the people were God conscious and followed the all religious principles. They were charitable, they had all good qualities, and there was very little, if any, deviation from the principles of pure religious systems. People's lifestyles or longevity of life was in some cases up to 100,000 years. And we have the example of Valmiki uh, Muni, the author of Ramayana, who lived in that age of 60,000 years, and he meditated for that many years. After he became proficient in his meditation, he became enlightened to understand deeply through his own spiritual vision the pastimes of Lord Ramchandra, which we know today now as Valmiki's Ramayana which is the most authorized edition of the delineation of the pastimes and activities of Lord Ra. And we have the following age. Each of the, the eight, there are four religious principles, mercifulness, cleanliness, truthfulness, and austerity. And each of the age, in such a yuga, the four, age, the four principles were followed. As the ages continue to go, material energy becomes more prominent and people become less, and got less inclined to pure religious principles. And gradually, start, your religion starts to move in slowly. In that age, people still lived up to 10,000 years. And people were also very pious. And the means of no realization was the Agrihotra, sacrificing, offering various games, grains, ghee, and various other uh, uh, 
items coming from the pure, pure mother nature into the fire with chanting mantras by the pure Brahmins. And the, the fire represented the Datanga Vishnu. So this was the form of worship in the ancient Turkey. And we lose one of the principles, or at least it becomes less prominent in the age of Treta Yuga. And the four principles are not there. One is gradually things that go down. As we follow the next stage is Dupara Yuga. Dupara Yuga. Krishna appeared at the end of the Dupara Yuga just to bring about the advent of Kali Yuga. But before that, that age, people were still inclined to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but there was a great sense of pride in that age. People were highly qualified materially. And the means for self-realization in that age was to worship the Lord in his deity form, Marcha Vigraha, the Pancharatrikan system given by Srila Narada Muni which we have adopted in this age to a small degree, but not to the extent that it was followed in the previous age, but people who were quite adept at worshiping the deity and with great opulence and great grandeur. And it was, uh, people were inclined to uh, uh, God consciousness, but yet there was a lot of pride in that age, so. Uh, gradually, again, the irreligion starts to move in, and people lived up to 1,000 years. You see, if you read the Bible, you hear about people in the Bible living 600, 800 years. Noah, he lived 800 years, or something like that. And even today, in sages in certain areas of the world, they live up 200, 300 years. But now we're in the age of Kali which has started about 5,100 years ago. And in this particular age, uh, practically all of the religious principles, mercifulness, cleanliness, austerity is destroyed. What's left is a little bit of truthfulness, not much, but some. In this age, Manda Samanda Matiyo Madhya Bhagya Upadhataha, Describes in the Bhagavatam the characteristics of people in this age. They're lazy, unlucky, misguided, and always disturbed. And in this age, although people claim to be Brahmins or even Kshatriya, it says Kalo Sudra Sambhavan, everyone is born Sudra in this age. And therefore, one has to practice according to the Vedic system when it needs training in a particular varna and of course a spiritual practice. So this is where you see here are some of the degraded qualities in this age. And there's a class of people who like to concoct religious principles by making up their own idea. I remember <laughs> I saw something really quite hilarious during the COVID epidemic in India, there was some villages. They had this, they had established a deity of Corona. It was a deity of Corona, yeah. And people were worshiping the deity. They had their masks on and they were, I don't know what they were chanting, but they were doing some kind of songs to Corona, coronavirus. You know, Sri Sri coronavirus. <laughs> I mean, this was on the news. <laughs> this was so. Yeah, so people have all kinds of ideas on how to worship in this age. <laughs> and of course, FR says there are even people who claim uh, some allegiance to a bona fide religion sometimes claim to be the uh, incarnation in that religion. Like I remember the 1980s was statistics that 2,500 individuals in the United States claimed to be incarnations of Jesus Christ. Only 2,500. Small number. 
And there's a few Krishnas walking around today somewhere. Not too many followers, but he's still there. And of course, even at the beginning, when Prabhupada was here, that was that one yogi, he was dressing up like Krishna. And he had a peacock feather in his hair. He had the yellow dhoti and the whole, the whole you know, nine yards. And he was, he was claiming he was Krishna. His mother said he was Krishna. He was from Rishikesh. And then his brother, which was, he was a little older, he claimed he was Krishna. So there was a family feud about who was actually the real Krishna. And it went, it went actually went into the courts in India. <laughs> they took it to court and the, the judge thought this was completely ridiculous and he threw the whole case at <laughs> Who's the real God? <laughs> So yeah, this is this is this is the age of color. So not only do we find people pretent pre pretentiously trying to come up to the standard of some kind of great incarnation of God themselves, but just their behavior is quite abominable, as we see here. They follow no standard religious principles nor no cleanliness. And that's why there are so many diseases this age, because people are unclean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uncleanliness, um, anxiety, and what's the third one? Overeating. Overeating, anxiety, and uncleanliness leads, leads to sickness. These are the three things. On the physical level, on the mental level, it's com committing sinful activities. So this is Kali Yuga, therefore Lord Chaitanya has come in this age to somehow give his mercy to the, to the fallen conditioned souls and try to uplift them from this horrible age through the process of Sri Harinam Sankirtan, Krishna Varna, Tusa Krishna, Sangha Panga, Saparshita, Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai, Ajanti Sumedasaha, that people in this age who have good intelligence actually engage in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Mahaprabhu, along with his associates, are the manifestations of the mercy of the Lord in this age. So one who takes to the process of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra regularly can be freed from the effects of this age, which are everywhere. <laughs> and even tries to filter into, into spiritual movements. Uh, irreligious principles comes in in the form of trying to. That's why we were explaining yesterday, Srila Prabhupada understood how bad Kali Yuga is. And these four religious principles, cleanliness, austerity, uh, truthfulness, and uh, uh, it was the other one, mercifulness, are coincide with the four prohibitions by re abstaining from meat eating um, or unnecessary killing of living entities. One can develop the, a quality of mercifulness. By abstaining from intoxication, one can develop the principle of austerity or maintain austerity. By, uh, by following the principles of proper uh, execution in, in family life and producing children, not like cats and dogs, as Srila Prabhupada would always say, one can overcome the principles of uncleanliness. And of course, speculative gambling and uh, various types of frivolous sporting activities breaks the principle of truthfulness. And of course, there's a lot of lying propaganda as we hear from this particular verse. Everyone has some idea what is God and what is religion, although they have no understanding. They simply give their own ideas. God is like this, religion is like this. And religion is meant to suit one's personal desires for sense gratification. So they concoct various types 
we were mentioning yesterday how there was one uh, yogi, supposed yogi. He came from, he was born in Pune and he came here. And he had a large following here. His name was Rajneesh. But uh, he created this false sense of yoga where you have as much sex life as you want. Now, this, this sex life brings about ecstasy, and therefore, this is the highest form of yoga. Of course, uh, where therefore we understand that, you know, he, again, people, even though he was actually a great personality, he had great, many good qualities, but he got involved with a prostitute, and then after that, everything changed. <laughs> And then we created this false sense of religion. And of course, his statements about religion was God does not exist. The greatest illusion to mankind is the idea of God. That was a statement by this person. So you see, even people who are born in Punya uh, Bhumi in India, they still also are subjected to these quality of your religion in the name of concoction in order to get followers, prestige, financial gain. Now this is the age of Kali. Therefore, the only the only safe place is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahapatra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Rama. Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nama Hoite Haya Sarvajayat Nishtara. In this age, Krishna has come in the form of his name, and one who takes shelter of the name actually can associate directly with the Supreme Personality Godhead through transcendental sound. And that sound is not only the name of God, but it's the supreme force of, to overcome all difficulties in this age, whether physical, mental, uh, uh, spiritual, all difficulties are eradicated by one who seriously and regularly chants the Hare Krishna Mantra and lives according to the principles as given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that is basically the same principles that we teach in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So these, it, it's very, safe. In other words, Kali Yuga cannot touch the devotees, although the Kali Yuga may create some disturbances for devotees. They cannot uh, do anything harmful to the devotees, nor destroy the devotees in their spiritual life. If the devotees remain together as devotees and chant Hare Krishna Mahamatra, this is where the foundation of all our spiritual strength springs from. And of course, through the association of devotees, we discuss the philosophy. We uh, engage in various types of services, plus the worshiping of the deity, and taking transcendental foodstuffs, Krishna prasadam, all of these activities uh, solidify the devotee's consciousness. And although, although it's like being in a, if you're in the middle of a rainstorm, it's pouring rain, if you have the proper rain equipment, you have a rain jacket, and boots, and umbrella, you can stay dry, although it's raining. And so in the same way, although it's raining, irreligion in this age everywhere, <laughs> and it's becoming even greater now. Every day there's a new religion is created. Somebody has a dream and says he's an incarnation of God. <laughs> And probably used to say that, you know, people in the Western countries, they don't know. So if someone comes from India, speaks very nicely, smile in such a way, everybody thinks, oh, he's such a, he has such a nice, beautiful smile. He, really, he wears long flowing robes and has a big beard. And his eyes twinkle, you know, so. Most people eating, uh, most of them eating ginger, that's why their eyes are twinkling. It's not from anything else. <laughs> so, 
And so, yeah, and the Rabin, these are the images that portray themselves as reality in this age. And Westerners are not so uh, keen on understanding them, so they easily become fooled by such persons. And these persons always promise some material benefits. We were talking yesterday how was one devotee who joined the Hare Krishna movement in the very beginning when Prabhupada first started. After two years, he left. And then the reason why he left is he said, Srila Prabhupada was too strict. And then after he left, he was talking to some devotees. He said, he said Swamiji will never be successful. He's too strict. <laughs> You know, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no leaving, no gambling. And uh, he said, Prabhupada said, and this was the feature of the people that you came to me. It was very difficult. Of course, some of them came up to the standard, but many came and went because they felt that Prabhupada was denying the basic principles of life, which is the sinful activities of the conditioned souls. So in this age, morality is up for interpretation. Your standard of morality is according to how, what you think it is. And everybody, just like now, I think they have this crazy thing now. You go to, uh, it's really quite crazy that no one in schools, the teachers cannot identify the students by their gender. Yeah, have a, yeah, you, if you call a boy a boy, you might, you might lose your job as a teacher. Yeah, I have, a, I have a disciple, she's a teacher. She was telling me you have to be careful. They have their own definitions of their uh, gender. I remember I was filling out a form. I had to fill out a form. I think it was immigration form or something. And I had, you know, gender male, female, other, other. I wasn't sure what other was, so I just stuck to the standard. <laughs> yes, I was just, uh, this is this wild. And I found out later there are 28 other identifications of different genders that one can adopt. So this is the way it's going on. So this is the feature of Kali Yoga. It's so, it's so, uh, what's to say, degraded that, and this is the pr principle of Kali. Kali's principle is to act in such a way as to throw all authority to the wind. Don't worry about authority, just follow whatever you want to do. Be your own authority. Do whatever you want. You're number one, you're free, you're intelligent. You know, you can make your own decisions. So this is the feature of Kali Yuga. And because of that, even it's very difficult to maintain a religious society because a lot of this stuff gets filtered in and people start to think in that same way. But therefore, if we follow Srila Prabhupada very strictly, then we'll always be happy in Krishna consciousness. Yeah. If, you, if you follow the principles strictly, and then that is the that is the consciousness develops from that, and one can chant the holy names of the Lord and experience the happiness of chanting. But if we're loose in the way we follow, and then we can chant the Hare Krishna Maha mantra, we won't be able to get much from that chanting, because the holy name is actually the essence of all religious principles, and therefore. One has to follow the other religious principles as a foundation for the execution of the glorification of the Lord. Of course, anyone can glorify the Lord, even the non devotees can do that. But actually, to raise your consciousness above the three modes of material nature, in other words, to the transcendental spiritual platform, one has to follow religious principles. And therefore, it, it becomes naive. And Srila Prabhupada also said, even if you're chanting Hare Krishna, 
you're not following the processes given by the spiritual master. He said it's like cooking with smoke. Cooking with smoke. That's all. Those of you who cook, you want fire, right? You cook with probably said if you cook with smoke, it'll take you about three hundred years to get your breakfast finished. <laughs> so there, therefore, everything is supportive, and in that support system, the the, the chanting of the holy name becomes really an, a, a, a feature of ecstasy for a devotee. The devotee loves to chant. He has a, he developed a taste to chant, but we have to follow these principles carefully. And therefore, Maya cannot tell the devotees not to chant because devotees just know that's Maya. Well, Maya will come in in other ways and say, you know, what is this four regulative principles? You can, these are just, this is, this was good 50 years ago, but now we're more modern. We got more things to do in life. We can't be so fanatical because if you're fanatical, you're dogmatic. And if you're dogmatic, you know, you're hard hearted. So the best thing to do is, you know, understand that the, the religious principles apply to the past, not the now. Now we have some other ones. We have this, like they say now, the four religion, the four prohibitions are no meat eating, no fish eating, no garlic, and no onions. These are the four restrictions. Now. <laughs> no meat, fish, garlic, or the other three are gone. <laughs> so yeah, this is this this is so Maya knows and she just attacks the non-devotees straight on because that's what they are subjected to for the devotees and slowly wars the devotees now by uh, introducing slowly you know irreligion in the form of semi-religious principles she's very good at that so one has to follow very carefully. That's and the only way we can do that is to regularly read through the Prabhupada's book. And also hear regularly the classes and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra regularly, 16 rounds. Not only 16 rounds, Prabhupada said 16 good rounds. So we should qualitize our chanting. And the best time to chant is early in the morning. Then it's the ideal time when the day's activity has not begun. And then you can focus and you can completely absorb yourself though during those times in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And so, yeah, so we see the effects of the age of Kali in this particular verse of Purport. And how, and of course, as the age of Kali continues, things will continue to degrade more and more and more. Uh, and if you read the 12th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, especially the 12th canto, I think it's third or second and third chapter, the 12th canto, the symptoms of the age of Kali. Um, these things are not simply dumb, somebody's idea. These things are will manifest in due course of time. But fortunately, at the same time, because in this particular age of Kali, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is here. And he is Karuna Avatar, Namo Mahavananaya Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Golda Tristana Maha. That he is the, he's making the process of spiritual life quite easy because Manda Sumanda Mataya Mandi in this age, people are not qualified for spiritual life. They're inclined to sense gratification. They're inclined to economic development. You'll see even today, we find that people take their material life more important than their spiritual life. Although they may be devotees, still...
Kristen took.
Yeah, so because of the age is so degraded, people are inclined to material life. You know, that's why nobody knows what real religion is. When real religion actually comes, then there is, people think it's irreligion. And when, irreli when real religion comes, the atheistic non-devotees immediately jump into action, to try to destroy it. It's like Christianity, when Christianity appeared. Christianity was a very powerful, pure uh, religious system. And then the, all of the Comstas came alive. And the uh, Judas came alive. And they were able to dismantle the essence of Christianity and made it just like a watered down version. So they're trying to do that with, with, with our movement now. But Prabhupada was very strong in establishing the foundation. So this our movement is always being attacked either directly or indirectly through various types of propaganda. Just to because the demons, the atheists, the non-devotees, materialists, they are fearful that if things go, if pure religious systems actually develop then all of their programs for sense gratification are destroyed. So, yeah, you can read about it. Bhakti Siddhanta Saras, what he talks about, the record. So, without going into the details. So, the purpose of Kali Yuga is that. Um, is to bring about a revolution. Therefore, it is explained that out of the four ages, Satya, Treta, Dabur, and Kali, Kali Yuga is the best. This age is considered the best for because to practice spiritual life is so direct, so easy. It's, it's simple. I can't say it's easy. But it's simple. This Prabhupada said it's simple, but not easy. And uh, that's Mahaprabhu's special mercy. And he is Radha Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nayanya. So he's come in a form as a devotee of the Lord to teach from the principle of a devotee how to worship the Supreme Lord. The Mahaprabhu is so merciful that the Jagais and Madais, they got his mercy. Well, what did, what did Krishna do with the Jagais and Madais? He just killed them. <laughs> he killed all the demons. But Mahaprabhu's program was to kill their mentality and not kill the physical body. So at the end of Kaliga, uh, what we hear, or what I, what is my understanding is, you said it, that Kalki uh, Avatar will come, and uh, then there will be Mahatale, and then there will only be a session, they in for the power, I think, I mean, what you think. Then uh, everybody who has not gone back to Godhead will be resting in the body of the uh, tradition. Is that correct? Well, that doesn't happen at the end of every Kali Yuga. It happens once in every 1,000 Kali Yuga. Yeah. So those people who Kali Yuga, they are really That's why they're not that clear. That's why I'm serious. Well, this age is just what it is. It's just the dream. They don't be born again in Kali And then they'll be given a chance to. Um, well, who will be born in Kali Yuga? 
whoever is, let's say, at the end of 1,000 countries, whoever is not born. Well, uh, when the devastation comes at the end of the millennium, then, then they merge into the body of the Lord. And they stay there until the next creation starts to manifest again. Then it comes that there is a partial manifestation or devastation at the end of uh, Brahma's day, Brahma's night, but at the end of Brahma's life, then there's a complete one. The complete one. So yeah, I think you're talking about the complete one. That happens four billion. No, even more than that. No, it happens 311 trillion, 340 billion years. That's when that millennium came with Brahma's whole about 100 year lifetime is exhausting. But at the end of this day, which is four, four billion, 320 billion years, is far from devastation. That means the lower planets and the middle planets are devastated. The higher planets remain. Yeah. Hmm? Higher planets is Swargaloka, the heavenly planets, the boat of Indra, the boat of the demigods. There are three levels of existence, higher, middle, and lower. One is called Buloka, Orloka, and Swargaloka. So we are in Buloka here. Buloka is the lower planet. Swargaloka is the higher planets. Indra and all of the demigods exist on the higher planets. Jaya Siddhi, Radha Dhammadar, Nalita Vishaka, Borisai, Ki Jaya. Sukhavupan, Ki Jaya.